Um, so the default Thingiverse page is really useful because it gives you access to a lot of other people's opinions on whether the parts work or not, or if there's improvements. Um, and obviously they're found in the Remix tab. But if we just have a look at the main page uh, to start with, you can see what the D-Bot will actually look like. So it's a aluminium extrusion frame um, with the bed um, suspended on, or supported by two lead screws, um, and then a set of wheels at the back. So I'm actually going to be adding um, another extrusion at the front and having wheels at the front as well. Uh, just to really support the frame or support the bed because it's going to be a 300 by 300 bed it's going to be quite heavy so it needs to have that good support so if we have a look at the Thingiverse page here we can see um, that this person who's actually made this is called David um, and he has his as a, as a 300 by 200 by 325 mil build volume um, he's given an approximate cost, um, it's really good, he's got links to some build videos, um, example prints that have been made on his printer, and then he's got some uh, additional components that you could add, so you've got a, a ramps enclosure, cable chain, um, V-slot covers, and stuff like that basically. So the D-Bot is also actually a modification of a printer called the C-Bot um, and David goes into some details here of what makes that different or what the differences are between them. Um, so as well as hitting files for the D-Bot from this page I'm also going to be getting some parts from this person so I'm not sure how to pronounce this person's name but there'll be a link in the description to where I'm getting all my parts from. Um, and this person has done a couple of different um, modifications to his parts and his printer so they work for me so I'm going to be doing some of those as well um, but we'll have a look at the parts um, in an, the next video where I actually have a look at the parts that I've finished printing so if we just go back to the DBOT page <coughs> um, and I'm just going to put it on the made page so that I can just show you some examples of what other people have done. Um, <clears throat> and I'm also going to stay at this point that I'm very happy to say that I'm getting sponsored for this build by two brilliant companies. Um, first is Filamentive. They are going to be sending me a spool of filament to use to make the parts. Um, and they have also very kindly made a code for my viewers to get 15% off their order. So if you put the code JAYS3D15 in the Filamentive website at checkout, you'll get 15% off. Uh, that code will be in the description as well. Um, also, I am very happy to say that I'm sponsored by Oozenest. Um, uh, both these companies are from the UK, by the way, so that's really cool. Um, and Oozenest are going to be supplying me with the frame of the D-Bot. Um, it's going to be in black. Um, and so once I get both of those um, items from the companies, they will also have, an, I'll put those in the video as well, so you can see what um, you actually get if you was to purchase these separately. The, I think the next video will actually be about the 3D printed parts and the actual um, other components that go into the build. Um, I've got to order some of those from elsewhere. Um, I'm actually getting all the fixings to put the frame together from a very local company um, called Suffolk Fasteners. Um, so I'll do a video, they'll be included in the video as well. So obviously once I have all the parts in to build the, the frame um, and I've printed the part, I've actually got a few parts here which I can show you. So here we have um, the left and right rear idler of the frame. Um, so you can see on this here where the extrusions actually fit in. Um, so this is like a corner basically. Um, 
and I might as well go into a bit of detail on how I'm printing the parts. So these are printed in um, PETG. Uh, this is a red PETG, and then the spool that Filamentiv will be sending me is re uh, white. So we'll be having like a combination of red, white, and black for the whole look of the printer. Um, and I'm printing all these parts on my Printerbot Metal Plus, um, which I've actually taken back to um, a previous modification I had. So it's currently running a Titan E3D Titan clone and an E3D Official V6, um, and it's printing really well. So here's a couple of other bits um, that I've printed, and all these parts are about sort of a three three and a half hour print. Um, for the most part, the bigger parts. Um, and I've actually got here, so this is the system that I've been using. This is um, a DIY um, flexible removable build plate. Um, and I found the best surface to print on for PETG is blue tape and glue stick. Um, and I just use some random craft um, glue stick. And it works absolutely brilliantly. So these, as you can see, these parts are completely stuck on and all you have to do is do a little bit of a flex and I'm sure you can probably hear that. Um, and then the parts should come off quite easily. Obviously they're stuck quite well um, with the glue um, and this just washes off because it's obviously water based. Um, but yeah, so that's another part and that is literally like straight off the build plate um, and we can get this other part off as well like that um, and obviously it leaves the glue where it hasn't printed on and you can just go re go over the parts that you've printed on and put that straight on and print so I'll be getting a few more printed parts done today um, but yeah so the settings that I've gone for and I've taken advice from the DBot Facebook page because um, the, the guide on Thingiverse from David suggests to print at 100% infill. Now personally I didn't want to do that because I felt it actually was a waste of filament. Um, so with combination from reading someone's comments on the Facebook page and a recent video that Stefan from the CNC Kitchen did, I use a combination of um, 5 perimeters and 33% infill. Um, and I've actually printed all of mine parts at 0.3 mil layer height. Um, for some of the smaller parts, I'll probably do at 0.2, but for these parts, 0.3 is absolutely fine. Um, and these are coming out really, really strong. I print them uh, at 230 degrees um, with a 60 degree bed on the blue tape, um, and it works absolutely fine. I've had nothing, no curling or anything. I actually did a couple of parts, uh, first of all, on build tack, and that was curling up. So I tried this, uh, and that's what I'm gonna carry on using, basically. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably about it for this part um, of the series. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and stick around for the other parts. Um, don't forget to use the code Jays 3 d 15 at Filamentiv's website to get 15% off. Um, and please, if you've got any comments or would like to know anything, put them down in the comment section and I will get back to you. Um, until next time, thanks for watching um, and I'll see you again.